Okay, everyone, welcome back to the shop. This is your daily dose of automotive archaeology and petting my shop dog, Stella. Stella is a six-year-old Brittany. She is very set in her ways, very headstrong as most high instinctive or high instinct bird dogs are. I love them though. They're great dogs. Stella, you're the greatest. You should have your own YouTube channel. Speaking of YouTube and the channel, welcome to the Two Stroke Turbo channel. This is not a two stroke car. We do feature those on the channel from time to time. Every now and then a car comes into the shop that is, I would say, remarkable in some way. And not like what you would think, like valuable or really rare. But this car is remarkable in that it's a survivor. This, you don't see these anymore. And that's the whole point of this video. And you may not even know what kind of car this is. I'm gonna clue you in here. It wasn't that popular of a car. It didn't sell well in the United States. This is a Mitsubishi product. It's a Mitsubishi Galant. It's not the high performance one. It's not turbocharged. It's just a family car. But what's interesting about this car, well, that it's in for service and it has some damage, is that it exists. It's still here. This is a 1999 Mitsubishi Galant. Again, it's not turbo, it's not four wheel drive. It's just front wheel drive, automatic. It is the GTZ. Let's see here. I'm doing, the, the trunk is missing the rods underneath, the springs that keep the trunk open. So we've got it open, propped with a Wilson tennis racket. I'm gonna take that down, it's gonna slam down. But let's see if I can show you what I'm talking about here. Okay, so if you look here in the corner, it's a GTZ, that's correct. It's got the spoiler with the third light on it, uh, no third light in the rear window. It has the uh, body kit, the lower body kit, the alloy wheels, the V6 engine, the automatic. This was open the car. a deluxe car, leather interior with the fake wood trim, power doors, power locks, uh, I should say power windows, power locks, automatic transmission, um, a CD player, which you wouldn't think it was that, that great nowadays, but back then, uh, white face gauges, airbag, a uh, pretty sweet car, sunroof, glass sunroof with a cover on it, uh, pretty sweet. So let's get to the engine. That's probably the best part. This is the Chrysler Mitsubishi engine. These engines were in the Chrysler minivan, although they were in the 12 valve version. This is the 24 valve version, uh, also used in the Montero, uh, some of the maybe Pajeros. It is gasoline, it's not diesel, of course. So uh, all the Chrysler minivans in the late 80s through the 90s had well, not all of them. The base model engine was a 3.0 12-valve engine. This is a 3.0 24-valve engine, so it's got double overhead cams or not. It has one cam sprocket, but goes to two camshafts. So this was the hot rod engine. This was supposedly the cat's meow back in 1999. I don't know the horsepower, probably 220 or something like that, maybe 200. Uh, pretty neat. This car is still around. Um, you just do not see them. Now... This customer has had this car for some time. It got into an accident, or I should say it was hit by a hit and run driver, pushed it up on the curb, dented the door. My job is to use her insurance money to bring the car back. She really loves the car. So new shocks and struts. I'm gonna buff out the doors, maybe pop the dents out, see if I can fix the trunk, uh, get the lights working. The car's been sitting around for a while. You can see the brakes. Oh, these ones are, brakes are super rusted. No, not this one either. Which brake was it when it was really rough? I think it's this one. It's gotta be this one. Oh yeah. Look at the brake rotors there. Only in one spot, I guess, huh? I don't know. The brakes are really rusted. Probably began on the curb side. We've had a lot of rain. So the brakes are not working great. Let's see if we can get them working. Uh, I think I said new shocks. You gotta fix the accident damage. So it got hit so hard on the passenger side, the trunk is out of kilter. You can see it's real, real high on one side. 
It was real high here. I got this down so it's even flush now. This door was wonky. That door was wonky. The rocker's pretty chewed up. The car was totaled. She bought it back uh, for salvage value um, from her trusty mechanic. For, uh, uh, took her advice, took the mechanic's advice and bought it back and then we're going to fix it up. I didn't do that to self-serve myself, but sometimes that happens. People really like their cars. They want them back. So what has it got? 167,000 miles. It's got a squeaky door. I think it's got 167. What was the key? Uh, you're going to have to trust me. It's got 167,000 miles. Pretty cool car. Um, not a lot of stuff. Fog lights, of course, sunroof, power mirrors, the CD player, I think I described that, automatic transmission, airbags. It does have a speaker in the dash right there. Might, might be a subwoofer of some type. Has a nice back seat. Very roomy. But not a popular selling car. The Accords and the Toyota Camrys really beat these things to out on price and reliability um, so it's really interesting that we see one of these now that isn't in a wrecking yard pretty amazing so i thought i would spotlight this gem today <clears throat> doesn't get enough love i i have never seen another one i have never seen another non-turbo uh mitsubishi galant this is the only one i've seen quite a few of the turbo galants because of their engine and power people have fixed them up but the non-turbo ones very very unusual to say the least so the turbo ones had the 4g 6.3 uh, eagle talon plymouth laser engine which was really powerful and people hopped them up and loved them most of those were five speeds a v6 one of this caliber kind of the executive class very uncommon so all right thanks for watching thanks for checking out this old girl on my channel and we'll try to dazzle you with the next cool car that comes along i got to get to work on this one and make the customer happy